<laughs> All right, welcome to the Corrective Culture Podcast, Miss Jackie Pipers. Thank you. Also Thank known you. as Better Than Bread. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Got that straight. It's cool. Yeah, I saw you. Um, who did I see share your stuff? I saw maybe it was Rod. Probably Rod. Yeah, yeah. Rod share your stuff. It was probably like two or three months ago now, mm. and um, I was like, "Who's this chick? Like, she's this. She's almost like." You know, most like, I guess, nutritionists or in that sort of field, it's, it's very like um, straightforward, but you're very blunt with it all and you almost come at the bullshit and, <laughs> and you would, you would cop some fucking flack for, sh- for that for sure. And I was always wondering like, cause we recently just started like copping, you know, the more you put out there, the more you're going to get back and mm-hmm. there's always going to be someone shit, you know, and you, and you look at like celebrities, Instagrams and it's just like hate down below but you actually have a lot of love below yours but i'm sure you cop it so i'd love like if you're listening right now go on her instagram give her a follow better than bread and she's just at a war against the fucking <laughs> vegetable oil the the beta males the <laughs> the um the glyphosate the vegans the vegans <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the vegans yeah, yeah it's good even tanil was saying one of the girls that work with us she's like i just want to get as many girls of a vegan diet as possible because yeah. they don't understand the damage mm. what got you um what got you into into it? What, where did your health transition start? Probably back when I was 19, 20. I'm from like southwest Sydney, Campbelltown. Mm-hmm. Between my house and the first shopping centre, there's probably like five or six McDonald's. Well, wow. um, I lived a really toxic life. So I was partying every weekend, doing a bunch of drugs, drinking, like probably between the ages of 16 or 15 and 20. And then I just noticed how shit I felt. Mm. And my whole health was basically declining. Like my anxiety was so bad. I still suffer with it, but it's a lot better than what it was. My skin was terrible. I had cystic acne. My gut was horrible. Um, Everything was just really on the downward. I was sick all the time. And then I just thought, I can't live like this anymore. And then it started with a little bit of research. The first thing I did was join a boot camp. And exercise was, was the first thing that I did. And I was like, oh, I'm starting to feel a bit better. And then nutrition kind of just followed that. Mm. And it led me down a lot of rabbit holes. I went vegan myself wow. as well. Wow, that's cool. That's why a lot experience. of people don't really know that I was vegan. Yeah. It wasn't long. It was probably like six, eight months maybe. It's pretty fucking long. I couldn't imagine Something that. like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then I noticed through that that my health spiraled down even more. Everything got worse. What did you find happened during that? Like what was your... Symptoms during <laughs> veganism. My gut health was horrible, like yeah. even worse than what it was before. Yeah, right. The bloating was terrible. Um, consistency going to the bathroom was horrible. Mm. Anxiety got even worse. My skin got even worse. My hair started falling out. Um, yeah, it was really horrible. Like my nails were so weak. Yeah. Um, and at first I kind of felt better because I was cutting out all the shit. Yeah. But then it just... Yeah, got really, really bad. And then I started researching more and then I was like, there's so much information out there. There's so much noise in the industry. So I thought I'm going to go and study. And I first went into studying kind of to do it more for myself. Mm. I wasn't really planning on treating one-on-one with clients, but that just kind of happened into it. But basically, I feel like everyone in the industry as well, well, most people in the industry have their own health issues that they then roll on into studying. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um and like when you were in Cam- Campbell Town's like rough Sydney, isn't it? Yeah, it's like walk to the train station with your keys in between your knuckles, kind of thing. Yeah, right. And um, <laughs> and when did you like? W- where did the path change? You know, because you were vegan, you started studying nutrition. But you know, you go to there's all these different nutrition sort of certs, and they a lot of them tell you basically to be vegan and stay away from saturated fat. How did you find your path in that? Like, was there someone that like you were following or? example or did you just try things or what was that so i did a lot of research into different kinds of um like studying options that were out there and i didn't want to just do like a six-week course online or anything i wanted to try and get in as deep as i could could it with studying um and i really wanted it to be science and research based mm. as best as it could so i thought i'm just gonna dive in with at the that time it was an advanced diploma i then upgraded and did the degree qualification mm-hmm. um, but it wasn't really anyone that i was kind of following or anything like that i kind of just looked at what were the best study options for that because you can do a six-week course online at the moment and then you're a nutritionist mm. Mm. um <laughs> 
yeah, it's like it it's 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 so hard in in that field and finding out where to go. And um, Dr. Pram was talking about when we had him on is like these days we got to, as a as a species we got to be told how to eat. You know what I mean? And it's mm-hmm. like for the millions of years, and and it's funny because now that you're doing this, you just find that it's just back to fucking real food that you can digest. You know what I mean? It's real food that you can digest that isn't sprayed. And even with the evidence stuff, people want to want to study to tell them that they shouldn't eat fucking glyphosate, <laughs> or it, it it's fucking nuts. Hey? I, yeah. I still I still can't <coughs> wrap my head around some of it. Like you need to study for everything, and especially especially in the physio realm, like you know, it, studies about um, say a- ACL tears. Are like what if that person eats absolute trash, or they have no collagen, or this, and then we're worrying about how far their knees traveling past their toes and shit. Mm-hmm. Like it's just. It's outrageous. Hey? Yeah, I was listening to Dave Sinclair talk about it the other day, and he was saying uh, he was doing a study on on he's like vegetarianism went, you know, and I might even go vegan and stuff like that. And he's talking about the studies, but he didn't talk once about organic meat mm. and talk about the quality of the food. And I'm like, it's meat is literally the worst thing for you, or the best thing for you. Mm. There's no in between. It's like you're either eating good organic meat and the fats filled with like goodness, mm. or it's filled with shit. Mm. <laughs> it's yeah. like um yeah fully fully <laughs> and and when did your health change like what what did you start what was the first thing you changed when you changed your health you just changed it all did you go all in or it was a little bit of a slow process to begin with like i said the first thing i did was a boot camp mm. um and then it was actually really funny the first health food i ever bought or health product i actually bought a vegan protein powder oh, that yeah. was the first mm, thing yeah. the i protein, ever yeah. bought the pea protein i remember shaking it up with water and i was working full-time in an office back then <laughs> and i had a sip of it and i was like what the fuck is this it yeah. tastes horrible i was like what is that but then yeah i went down a lot of different paths i did the veganism and then i went low carb and then um i went kind of more balanced and then i went through a stage of where I wasn't really eating much and I was doing heavy cardio. And I feel like I've been through kind of all of it to get to this point now where everything's, I guess, a lot more balanced. Mm. And I don't really like to use that term, but because then there's that whole push about non-restrictive balanced eating, which I'm like, no, there are good and bad foods. Mm. But I feel like I'm in a better place with everything now. Yeah, yeah. I hear there's one of these sort of influencers do constantly do like dosage makes the poison. But, but, But it's like he's going by what this person in a suit says, you know, in a lab coat says you can have this much before it's poisonous, but any amount less than that, it's fine. And I'm just like, fuck, it's fucking nuts, man. Like just eat your food. It's bullshit. And I think we've all lost our connection to ourself. Like I've been fasting lately and some, most days I've been doing 24 hours, but I feel like I'm really hungry and I'm like, I've lost, I haven't, I felt like I've lost that connection to like, cause we just got so much abundance. We don't actually get to feel hungry and Mm. feel like, how much our body actually needs fuel. And I'm like, oh, what do I want to fuel it with? And most of it's like sometimes I'll eat a little bit of cacao or something like that and just like not really think about the calories I'm putting in. But lately I've just like been having a little bit of food and I feel the effects so much more because I'm hungry. Mm. And like the other day I got a piece of grilled fish. I don't know what they did with it. This was about two in the afternoon. And I, I like I felt so tired and like almost like my, my cog- cognition was just like off or something like that. Mm. Then the next day I had a steak for lunch and I just felt so good throughout the afternoon. And that's something that like I should know already. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But because I'm hungry, I, I really feel what's going on in my body. And I think we've all lost a lot of that because there's so much food in abundance. Like you wake up, you have food. You don't really get to feel really hungry all the time. And it's been so good, eh? It's been yeah. so good for that reason. Um, one of our mentors, Paul, talks about like life. Life is just about connecting to your body's inner wisdom for the last thousands of years so it's Mm. like you know if it says get up and go for a walk go for a walk there's people playing video games when their body's saying go to the toilet and they'll sit there for the next fucking three hours Mm. and it's like do i feel like chicken do i feel like pork do i feel like fasting do i feel like a fucking broth do i feel like sleep you know what i mean should i have coffee today or is my body tired and saying i shouldn't have coffee mm. but it's it's constantly constantly that and using the pain teacher to, as a reference like if, if you don't feel good there's the pain teacher stop and listen but if people really connect to that and it's a work in progress i'm still trying you know but i feel like i'm getting better and better and better and that's that's the key to fucking 
the yeah, happiness. Yeah, I think we've all lost that, eh? Like, yeah. that's... Because it's so confusing. It's yeah. hell confusing to be like... Like, how do you know when to st- where to start when you just kind of don't really know what foods are doing for you and, and things like that? Like, mm. that's why... I, yeah, I think this fasting thing's been amazing for, for, for seeing that. Yeah, well, they say just get, like... A baseline level of health first you know you got to start yeah. just fucking even if you're not hungry like you know you get you get people that you know, like Tanil started in regularly on a rhythmic time one of the girls trained with us and she wasn't hungry at the start in the morning but then she started doing it for a few days and then she was hungry in the morning you mm. know so the body started adapting to this oh yeah these calories are in mm. um so let's you know i got used to that so when you started your i guess your instagram and started the the approach which I love, which I love. <laughs> um, like, did you just, like, y- your approach is memes and going at sort of um, vegetable oils and vegans and that, like, did, is that just in your personality? You know what I mean? Was that just your character and then just you're just being authentic? I think so. But if you scroll back to what my Instagram was like when I first started, mm. it's so different. Yeah. It's evolved into what it is now because I started being more, authentic yeah like I'm so sarcastic all the time so it's just natural for me to do stuff like that but originally I used to just upload recipes I was one of those recipe pages where I would make raw vegan treats yeah like the keto bombs and stuff like that that's what it started (laughs) with and then now I hardly like I don't even post recipes now yeah yeah and now it's just yeah I'm sick of all the bullshit that you see on Instagram I'm Mm. sick of all the health influencers being Mm. like here's my wheat big slice for breakfast Mm. and Mm. don't have restrictive diets because that's bad and blah 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 when Mm. there are people with chronic health conditions where if they eat wheat bix or they have veg oil or they have gluten or whatever yeah they're fucked it's going to exacerbate their conditions and I'm like we need to stop making people feel bad for cutting out certain food groups. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like if I can just be as blunt as I can with maybe a little bit of humor thrown in, yeah. it's going to reach yeah, definitely. a good yeah. amount of people. I'm totally on board with that too. Cause like, I, th- I feel like sometimes health can be so serious and I think we need to like put more of a funny side into it as well yeah. and relate to more people. But yeah, do you cop a lot of flack? Like do people, do people like, I mean, just for instance, this is so funny cause I, I've kind of had a bit of insecurity about it recently because I can do funny stuff all day, but when you start talking about serious stuff, I started getting ri- ripped on for being serious mm. by a few friends and shit like that. And I was like, I don't know who I am. Like, am I supposed to be funny? Am I supposed to be serious? Like, I don't know <laughs> yeah. fucking what's going on here. <laughs> and then I had the funniest message last night, this fucking cunt. <laughs> he, he messaged me and he was like, no, he, he wrote, did you see that message? No. He said, did I send it to you? He said, um, dude, stick to the serious stuff. To be honest, not being nasty, but this comes across as kind of try hardish. <laughs> what on that, that reel? Doing, doing a funny reel that I did in Harvey Bay. Oh my god! And I was like, I can't fucking win. Like, <laughs> and I was like, you, will, you know the fucking answer. It's like I block thought, or delete. Yeah. yeah, I know. I was like, I thought the funny stuff like that would be good, but then I was like, maybe they don't like the. And I'm like, I'm, if I just worry about what everyone thinks, I'm just going to be oh, like, man. I'm just yeah. going to be a shell of a human. Yeah. So like, you've just got to be fucking ruthless. And that's why I respect what you're doing. Cause like, fuck Instagram for one and fuck what people think. It's yeah. like, you've got to be you. Otherwise you won't know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> did it ever like, yeah. So to say the first time you copped a bit, did, how'd you respond to that? How did, how did it make you feel? The first time I copped hate, it really affected me yeah. a lot. Like I got really emotional about it and I was like, oh no, like, oh my God, like I can't do this. And then I was really careful about what I was posting, but then it just got to a point where I was like, I yeah. don't really give a fuck anymore. Like this mm. is me. This is what I believe. If you don't like it, don't follow me. But yeah. I do, I get a lot of hate, a lot of hate, especially from vegans mm. because, you know, they're preaching this unrealistic ideology, in my opinion, of mm. what they think is right. And then when they see someone say, no, eat meat, mm. veganism is bad, it's going to cause nutrient deficiencies, mm. they get their back up and they start being aggressive. Mm. Um, and then also I get a lot of hate from people with maybe um, certain health conditions, like endometriosis is a big one. Um, I've had a lot of hate from women saying that, you know, you can't just say go gluten-free, go dairy-free and like stop drinking alcohol and stuff because it's, you know, they. I feel like they're having – a lot of trouble ex- accepting that because mm. they feel like they've tried everything and then hearing something that I'm saying about what they're doing, it's maybe triggers them that maybe they're not doing enough really. Definitely. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Um, so I've just got to ignore that and keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine you really listened. 
yeah. you know, you're like, oh shit, okay, I won't post that. Like you're never yeah. going to win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, there's always, like you said, and then you said someone the other day posted, they don't want the serious uh, yeah, shit. Yeah. Stop yeah. being a faggot or something. Yeah. Shit, yeah. Like. Someone's like, stop posting shit with your shirt off and jump back on a bodyboard. You yeah. kook or like. Because like Jake's oh whole following is, a, so is from fuck. bodyboarding, you know? Mm. So he was right. like one of the best bodyboarders in the world. So it's like. Fucking no. <laughs> right. I did not know that. Yeah. Well, that's. that's, that's Bodybuilder. <laughs> yeah. So like. You know, it's he's, he's got his own move called the stone flip. How's Donald was talking about it in the thing yesterday? Was he? Yeah, he's like, I went on, found it, and that's your move, hey. Like, that's a yeah. world body body I move. think there's one other guy that's done it. Really? Yeah. What but is the stone flip? It's like a double roll spin. So it's like a – so Epo actually created that air roll spin. Oh, yeah. And then he was like, you know, you can do two of them. And I was like, I'll try it. And then I landed one, like, first shot. And I was like, yeah. oh, I'm just going to call it. I actually called it the Iron Lotus oh, first because nice. off Blades of Glory, you know, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then that didn't really stick. It just started get, getting called that. But yeah. no one's really done it since. Like, I think it's a functional move, but it's just, yeah. 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 I don't know. It's, it's past cool. life now. Anyway. A, that's like for the existence of mankind, that's that's your move now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> pretty yeah. So, yeah, yeah. With, with that hate, right, Um does, does it just roll off the skin now? Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, sometimes there'll be something where maybe I'm like, okay, maybe my response to something may not have been as nice as it could have or something like that. But now in terms of hate, I'm just like, whatever. I don't even respond mm. anymore. Mm. Mm. Cause I'm yeah. just like, oh. Just delete them. Yeah. I just can't be bothered. Yeah. It's like a waste of my energy really is what it is. Yeah. yeah. We cop some shit like, I cop some shit off some evidence-based physios and stuff that like show me the studies of, this and that it's like oh, i did one on this uh hamstring and, and flat back posture the other day and people can always take one thing out of it and make it sound like what about this in that scenario and of course there's going to be scenarios but i'm not going to go through the video and say but if this happens this happens this happens mm-hmm. you know what i mean and and this is where they're getting like stuck what did this do so he's like um something about hamstrings and flat back postures and disc bulge and how he goes there's no evidence to say that but my evidence is that I measure every single person's lumbar curve that comes in here to the degree and fucking nine out of 10 of them have a flat back and that's been hundreds of people now, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like, that's pretty good fucking evidence to me. Yeah. That, and that you, and then you understand that if it's flat, it's going to push the disc out like a toothpaste and, and just it basic like, uh, physics. It's like, it makes sense, but if it's not on paper, it, it doesn't exist. And it's, it's, um, I, I, almost i did get triggered for a bit i look at it i I catch myself writing something back and i was like and i feel like i could just come at these people Mm. with fucking like just logic you know yeah but then i was like oh i caught myself i was like nah like i don't respond to the people that give me grace just because life's short and i appreciate them but you know what i mean i can't be on the computer all the time doing that shit so why would you respond to shit yeah so i can't Mm. just be responding to these people that fucking don't have a voice (laughs) crazy yeah it's fucking crazy but i mean I, I also think, like, no one ever says it to your face. Yeah. Ever. And mm. it's like, I wish they did. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> like, yeah, it's just like, it's keyboard warriors and they're mm. kind of, I mean, you're triggering probably where they want to, um, where they actually want to go in life. Mm. And I know Paul talks about, I think it's the jester archetype or the joker archetype and people hate the joker or the jester in life because he has a picture of a clown walking down the street dancing. And everyone's like, oh, look at that fucking crazy person or look at that person, judge, judge, judge. But really it's the inner them that wants to express their child or express their artist or express mm. who they really are. And they just feel confronted by it. Mm. So it's like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just cool. Archetype, like, and I also see it's it's cool what you come at. It's not just nutrition. You got like um, mm. soy boys and like weak beta <laughs> males and, and, you know, that, that's, that's such a true thing because yeah. like, like I see where you are. It's like you know, as as a female's goal, it's like the goal is to step into the queen archetype, right? And first step of that is not caring what others think. You know, it's taking upon ideas and that, but but still staying true to yourself. And as the king archetype, you mm. know, like I think, like my my role as a male is to just, and every guy's role as a male it should be really is just to try and become a fucking king. And when I think of that, I think of like. Like if you think of a, the, the character of a king, I think of like witnessing everyone and your dream team and making sure people around you are supported and safe and and not just doing it for yourself and being on top of your food, your fucking water, your 
your mind, your meditation, which is witnessing, right? As mm-hmm. a king witnesses and your finances and your dream and your goal and staying true to that path and not letting things pull you off because things will, but a king won't let that happen because there's a there's a job to be done and the you know, I feel like my job's to change the world and our job's to change the world. Yeah. And I really believe that. Mm. Yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah. And I guess like yeah, for a female what would that be? Like queen Yeah. So I guess it's what would that well like if, if you think of a queen, what what is the character of a queen to you? Like if you were to like um Basically, it's like a character. Right? This is all just young psychology, but the Avatar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess it would be like stepping into what your feminine should be like. Yeah. I've been listening to um, Jay Malik okay. a little bit lately. Rod's yeah. got me onto this whole like feminine, masculine kind of thing. But I think, um, yeah, embracing your feminine, not chaotic, um, not really in control. But if you're, I guess, queen mentality. Taking care of the king mm. <laughs> he's, mm. he's part of it. Do you know much about the feminine, masculine? Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've read a fair bit of David Dider's stuff, and yeah, yeah okay, yeah, I love, I love all that stuff. Yeah, and King yeah. Warrior, Magician, Lover. It's yeah, a good archetypal book, but yeah, because we all have <clears throat> feminine and masculine. We that's what yeah. we're made up of, and you, it's, you can often see a woman that's too masculine or too feminine. Mm. So yeah, it's about finding the balance, right? Yeah. It's about being loving. The feminine expression is everything the universe in its entirety and a, and a masculine is more like just fucking get me there like from a to b leader yeah leader and th- and it's so true when you see people in relationship if they're not playing the leader if they're a masculine person whether it's a female or male if they're not playing leader and knowing where they're going it's it's often a turn off for for the person the other person mm-hmm. because they're like i don't have you know i need to be led but if they get too in love or they open up too much, they stop leading. So you can see it's this like push-pull kind mm-hmm. of thing. And I think it's so important to just have a basic understanding of that. When I first understood, uh, I would say, the female expression of like, oh, my God, you're not going to win this argument because she's in a female expression right now and she just wants to be heard. I was like, oh, this all makes sense now. And I was just like, <laughs> Yeah, it's cool. It's so right? cool. Yeah. So cool. It helps so much. And I think like, fuck, that's a lot of communication in relationships that is so important. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, exactly. Just not lying. Yeah. Not, not lying. That's such a fucking big thing. Speaking your truth and but how hard is it to speak your truth when it hurts? Yeah. yeah <laughs> You're like, yeah. I'll just bend it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> just like mm. <laughs> I'm actually I'm feeling kind of this way, but not really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so weird, eh? Oh, that's that's so it. Just um, protect. <laughs> so, what's what's your next goals? Like, what, what where what are you what are you doing these days? You working one on one with clients, and do you do any online programs or anything like that? So at the moment, yeah, I'm working one on one with clients, mm-hmm. which I didn't actually think I was going to do, but mm-hmm. now this is kind of the space mm-hmm. that I'm in. Um, I work one on one with clients, and my plan moving forward is to develop some sort of online program. Yeah. Um, probably specific for certain conditions. Yeah. So whether it be fertility or endometriosis pcos yeah um acne that sort of stuff just so it's a lot easier because i'm finding it hard to kind of keep up with the amount of um clients that i'm doing because mm. one-on-one's very draining fucking nice yeah really yeah. really draining and yeah, i'm really fuck. finding that um I'm starting how many to do you do a, a day mm. sorry how many, how many do you do a day um, it ranges because I'm also working a couple of days at a health food store as well. Oh my but God. if I do, say for example, if I do six a day, it's a lot. Yeah. By the end of the day, oh, I'm just fine. I can't. You must have That's, no life. It's probably it's probably <laughs> I reckon where you're at. It's probably time for you to not work at a health food store. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think yeah. you should because it's about going all in, and and it means like if you feel like you can financially cover yourself just with the clients, those day like we don't work Wednesdays. And the best thing I ever did was take Wednesdays off because it mm. just recharges me. So in my head, Monday, Tuesday, I'm like, fuck, I can't believe I used to work Wednesday because I'm like, I need that day off for yeah. this day, getting on top of shit. And Thursday, Friday. But that Wednesday could be that online program. And the universe comes at you as quick as you come at it, right? Yeah. So a lot of people will, will, will do that and they'll stay in this sort of security for this, this and that. But as soon as you go fucking all in, like, like lately I've been waking up every morning and I've been saying, I'm going to change the world five times to myself, right? Mm. And like the shit that's fucking coming at me, literally in the last week, I'm like, oh, these are the avenues that I'll be able to do that or get known, you know mm. what I mean? And it's just like, 
it's just it's back to this manifestation shit, right? Yeah. But it, it's you can't you can't tiptoe, you know. Yeah. It's like do it, and and it, we all did, we all, we all do, right? But you fucking just got to do it. And how you said, like you know, a warrior doesn't hack at the head; it just cuts it clean off. Mm. And that's such a good little um, thing to live by. Yeah, it's, there can't be a plan B. Yeah, it just has to be a plan A, and it feels so good, a bit scary, I guess, to to do that. Mm. But I also think that in the transition period from say a full time job into your dream life Mm. there needs to be a tipping point Mm. there needs to be a point where you're like doing it on the side and it starts to grow naturally and you get to the point maybe where you are now Mm. where you're at the store and you're like fuck i've got no energy i probably need to let that go there needs to be that Mm. i mean there's two ways you can do it i'm jan always said cut it clean off and go straight in just jump off the cliff and swim in the ocean Mm. or toy with it a little bit i think most people do the toy with it a little Mm. bit i Mm. definitely did Mm. and uh I don't think there's any right or wrong way, but I think one's e- a little bit easier. <laughs> yeah, I did. Like, I took a few days yeah, and true. I was scaffing yeah. and, and did it. But there was a moment that he's like, oh, I can't just like, you know, I sort of need a worker. Is, are you going to do it? And I was like, this is the moment. And I yeah. was like, no, nah, I guess I can't, mate. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then as, um, as soon as I quit my job, I booked in something like fucking nine clients mm, within, straight up. within like a week or some mm. shit. It just went the universe like, this is what you're meant to do. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. going to be good. Yeah. Do this. Yeah. Um, I'd love to touch on the some nutrition shit because I touch on endometriosis and PCOS. Like, I'm really interested in that sort of stuff and fuck the world is too, right? Because yeah. just about every second girl has that. Mm. What What is, let, first of all, what is endometriosis and PCOS and are they similar to each other? And they No, they're different. Endometriosis is an autoimmune condition Mm -hmm. which i think is more recently people are kind of starting to realize that it's an autoimmune condition Mm -hmm. um where basically you start growing endometrial lining in other places where it shouldn't be um there's even cases of some women having it grow in their eye well but it actually causes a lot of um pain because there's a lot of inflammation around those areas and then um as you can see like yeah it causes like with a lot of women that have it it causes excruciating pain Mm. Um, and then especially around period time, but it's ultimately a disorder of a dysregulated immune system. Okay. And is, does that to, for you, does that just come back to the gut? A lot of it. Yeah. yeah. A lot of it. Yes, definitely. Um, coming back to the gut for sure. Yeah. Because most of your immune system is in the gut. And yeah. if there's inflammation in the gut, there's systemic inflammation everywhere. Was it around like 20 years ago? You know what I mean? <sighs> I think it's definitely, there's definitely more cases now and it's getting worse and worse. Any kind of hormonal reproductive condition, there's a lot more cases. Infertility is massive now and it's getting worse and worse um, linked to the gut, linked to um, all the environmental toxins, plastics, Mm. like all that sort of stuff, making it all so much worse because all of the chemicals and things like that in the environment, they act similar to hormones within the body. And then that causes hormone dysregulation because it impacts the endocrine system. So then the body starts getting confused. And then like with endometriosis, if you start surrounding yourself with a bunch of stuff that has chemicals that are going to mimic estrogen within the body, um, that's going to lead to endometriosis and other things because it's also a disorder where you've got excess estrogen. There's a lot of people like, you know, there's there's people that say soy mimics estrogen and then there's people like a lot of, I know vegan sort of people these days are bringing up studies that say soy doesn't do anything against the estrogen again in these meta controlled studies, or whatever. I know personally of people that when they cut out soy, their symptoms got a lot better. Yeah. Um, what's what do you say on that on on soy and, and estrogen mimicking and and I'm sure you probably look at those sort of papers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And to be honest, there's I mean anything you look at, there's going to be research for both sides of the argument. That's mm. just yeah. how it is. Yeah. But in terms of what I see in clinic um, and what I've read, it can go both ways. So soy is a phytoestrogen, so it mimics estrogen within the body. And basically that can either cause them to sit on the receptors um, and cause a weaker response because true estrogen is stronger than phytoestrogen. So sometimes it can actually make symptoms get better. And you can see that in... Uh, menopausal women Mm -hmm. that have really big dips in estrogen. So if you give them phytoestrogens like soy or flaxseed is another one, then it actually makes their menopausal symptoms better. 
But sometimes it does the opposite effect and then you get all women as well putting makeup on and other chemicals that have the same kind of effect and then you get a build-up in the body um, and then it actually makes symptoms a lot worse. So it can go both ways. But for men, I just – I see – Soy boys. Yeah, the soy boys, yeah. yeah. I don't think that it's great for men to be consuming soy. And soy is not what it used to be either. It's so processed now. Mm. It's not like it was traditionally like natto. Yeah. And I just think like whenever something's like a rare ingredient like that that people are having all the time, it's like that's not – you got to do shit to it. It's not something we've eaten for millions of years where you just you can't just grab it from the ground and eat it. Mm. That's the shit that makes sense to me, you know. Mm. It's it's these ones that you got to do a lot of processing and like nuts and seeds and that. You got to soak it and shit. Like Mm. I can't be fucked, (laughs) you know. So I don't really eat a lot of them, but I'll still have some almond flour because I just like to make some treats, right. (laughs) But it's it's like – um, it's not, it's the first thing if someone come at me with some gut issues, as my education goes, I'm just going to cut out all that yep. nuts, seeds, grains, fucking soy, sure. all that shit, eat meat, eat veggies that are tolerable, you know, not too many, maybe cook them, you know, a bit of sweet potato and fuck it. Just pe- people doing that while making it all organic and changing their water. Like that's most of the work. You yep. know, you watch people just transform with that sort mm. of stuff. Mm. If you have a girl come in with endometriosis, what's your approach? So first off, we get them off gluten and dairy straight away. Cool. That's first. For any autoimmune condition, yeah. it's always gluten and dairy free for sure. Mm-hmm. Then we look at lifestyle. Alcohol is a massive one. I really, for endometriosis patients, I really look at what um, toxic load they have in their life. So what chemicals they're putting on their body and what they have in their home, because then that goes back to the whole um, estrogen mimicking compounds and chemicals. Um, and then it's basically what you said, going back to the basics, like eating meat and veg that's tor- tolerable um, and cutting out all the crap it's mm. and it's when you say it it's so simple and it's funny sometimes I think wow like I did a whole degree to learn to eat real food mm. you know <laughs> like yeah well you, you just you're learning at least the the stuff to back it up to convince people to do that right because they're all told like heaps of shit doctors are telling them no don't worry about it like you know organics a scam they, because of a study like the organic scam thing is nuts and that the nutrition differences oh, in organic. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, and it's and it's I don't know, like yeah. I've I've, said, I've probably said it on this before, but there was a um celery farmer and he used to be a commercial celery farmer and he goes, We the seed itself was GM and he goes, We'd spray the soil first, mm. then we'd spray the the plant three times a day and then when it was picked we'd dip it in a chlorine solution to kill all the shit before it went out to the big major supermarkets. Crazy. And then there's these girls doing liver cleansers with celery, celery juice, juice and yeah. woolies and Ugh. wonder why it, it it doesn't work you know or maybe yeah. sometimes it does get better because they're eating celery and not eating fucking maccas yeah. You know? there's, yeah there's all these little things yeah so, um we shouldn't even have organic non it just should be food mm. yeah <laughs> it should be like it's this introduced or sprayed <laughs> celery yeah sprayed this yeah sprayed yeah it. Exactly. and it should say all the chemicals on it and i bet yeah. fucking I bet all their minds will change. If you, I see someone picking up sprayed celery to save it a, do, a dollar or two, like, fuck, you're off your head, mate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and so PCOS. Yeah. So there's different types of PCOS. Mm-hmm. And sometimes PCOS, well, a lot of the time, it's misdiagnosed post-pill because um, women will get off the pill and then they won't get their period for months and then they'll get diagnosed with PCOS because they get an ultrasound that shows that they have lots of follicles and they're like, oh, you've got PCOS, but follicles are normal for okay. women. Mm-hmm. Um, Because follicles are not cysts. But you can have insulin resistant PCOS. So then you have a blood sugar driving factor for that. You can have um, like androgen PCOS. So you've got really high, it's like an umbrella term for the male hormone. So it's very like testosterone driven Mm -hmm. PCOS. Um, And then, yeah, you can get post pill PCOS, which is kind of like misdiagnosed. There's all different types of PCOS, but usually. very common is um, weight gain and hair where you don't want it. Mm. Um, a lot of women will start to get like chin hair and stuff like that. And is that more so from the the androgen one than the yeah. insulin one? Um, and also insulin. Usually they kind of go together. You'll see it very commonly together because um, high insulin will drive androgen production. Okay. Um, but then with stuff like that, it's all about just bringing down those markers and it goes back so much to – diet as well and then supplements as well what's going to raise a woman's testosterone or androgen i should say high insulin or if their um pituitary gland isn't working properly 
or if their other hormones aren't working efficiently, like if they're not ovulating properly and, yeah. and things like that. It's all about hormonal balance, mm, really. Yeah. And you wonder how much of a mental emotional play is in that with with the girls that are in their masculine bit too hard, you know, say if that's in a relationship mm. or in fucking life, they're just like training five days a week, like like a man at night. Yeah, you know I mean? for sure. That's just stress too. Hey? Yeah, stress that has to like... And caffeine. It. Stress is massive. Yeah. 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 And... um. As well, like I know you were talking about fasting before, but fasting for women can sometimes cause, ma- cause massive mm. hormonal issues. Yeah, that's yeah, it's completely girls, different. Yeah, that's, yeah, I know. Yeah. I, was, I was listening to this the other day, and no one mentioned it for women. And I'm like, women need to be massively, you know, like rhythmic, Daniel, rhythmic. Like you need to make mm. sure that they're very gentle and like their hormones are balanced. And a man's so different to a woman. It's mm. like, well, what? and it's just like we go out in nature hunting for fucking a few days. There's going to be some yeah. fasting involved. I just what I think anyway. Okay, you know, dude, this is the girls will be back, you know, at yeah. the at the campsite, yeah, um, with the kids. So there's got to be food. There's got to be some sort of storage of food there. And and you know, a lot of people say, you know, you see, um, a few people say like, don't most women wouldn't fast more than twelve hours, you know, and, yeah. And and it's going to be different if that woman's got a lot of weight to burn, then she may be able to handle a little bit better, mm. things like that. Yeah. So. But you see it, you do see it. Oh, uh, you'd never recommend fasting, I don't reckon, to a woman unless you know that their general health is like almost 10 out of 10. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even then, like I don't, I don't think I would. But mm. one thing I have noticed is my cognition. Like uh, I can feel like I can string thoughts together really clearly. Yeah. Um, and that's only happened in probably the last three days. Before that, it was really foggy. Um, it was actually bad fasting. But then something's definitely shifted in my body where I feel more alert and more. Yeah. It's just been, I'm not doing it forever. I'm not going to be an extremist on on things like that, but I'm just kind of toying with it. And it's been just like the coolest thing ever. It's been so good, eh? Mm. Did you ever get involved with fasting? Not really. Yeah, right. but I was more doing it when I was like not really eating much food in general, mm-hmm. like years ago. You done a 21-day 21, 21 water fast yet? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no. I get angry. I'm not going to get extreme. Like five hours. Yeah, that's um, good. Listen to that. You know. Yeah. Listen yeah. To that. Um. Yeah. I've dabbled with it, but wasn't really for me. But like you said, it definitely goes back to our innate biology. Like women mm. are just not adapted to stress like men. Like we can't adapt to stress like men can, mm. and that's with the whole fasting thing. So like we, you guys can handle that a lot mm. better than we can. But then mm. it starts impacting Mm. our thyroid and all our hormones and our body's like we can't have a baby right now yeah Mm. yeah like i could um i could have a water fast for like three days and i reckon it wouldn't even change my head a little bit no way yeah yeah and i saw that when you did that yeah so and i was like super glucose like reliant when he did it and i did it for like i was like for six hours i was like oh my god i need to eat like i was panicking Mm Yeah, I, I just start thinking about like benefits of shit. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be eating this. Like, <laughs> I, I'm hope like if yeah, I, naturally I haven't been eating as much food lately since I hurt my knee. Obviously, because I'm not doing as much, and it's just a natural thing. Like, I just I need a little bit of protein. I'm having collagen, mm. Mm. and um, for the people listening, I did my LCL on Sunday, last Sunday, and and it's now a week later. Sunday would have probably been in about four hours. It would have been exactly a week, right? Mm. Um, and grade two, well, I believe grade two tear. I didn't get a scan, but and the next day I was hopping, right, and it popped and the physio at the uh, comp reckons the same thing. Mm. And I've just been having collagen like every fucking day. I've had three tablespoons of collagen a day. I've had a bit of vitamin C. I've had organ meats. I've had bone and marrow. I've sawn it every day. I've been hopping on it, like jumping, jumping, because I need whenever – just think of the body like water, right? It stiffens with speed. So if I drop a brick into the water, it's going to like, like mm. slap, right? We are water. So – I've just been like hopping up and down and creating that stiffening response for the osteoblast to lay down the collagen on my LCL. Um, and yeah, saunering, inverting, pulling all the fluid up. And every time I take a step, because you know what I mean? If I went to someone, a lot of the time they put you in a fucking boot mm-hmm. or they'll put me in a brace or something, right? Say don't move it past 30 degrees because of fucking rah, rah, rah. But every time I take a step, my gastroc, my calf contracts and it pushes the fluid up the knee. And when it pushes the fluid up the knee, Instantly, I feel like that's good. It's like, a, oh, yeah, that's nice. It's like it's just relieving the swelling. But, like, this has been a week now, and it's crazy. I'm, I'm basically walking normal, and I feel like my skin and nails and shit have all gotten, like, mm. tighter from the ridiculous amounts of collagen I'm having. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Is there any supplement things that you reckon I should be doing to... Well, we so, chatted about this before. I feel like yeah. you've literally got everything... All over a day. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you could potentially take some circulatory 
um, herbs and stuff like that. Mm. What herbs? Um, so you could do like ginkgo. Yeah. Um, and I'm not a herbalist, so I technically shouldn't really say, but no, he gives a um, fuck. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but I would probably do circulatory herbs. Yeah, as well, cool. and just if you can do that through foods as well, like ginger, um, anything that's really warming, chili, yeah. that sort of stuff as well. Yeah. Um, just to get the blood flowing. Well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, good. It's I'm actually sort of like it's been pretty happy with it. Like, Dude, like oh, it's this an is absolute cool. gift. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I said that to you when you first did it. I was like, this will be the best thing that ever happened to you. It was like when I snapped my leg bad, I was like, I look back on it as the best thing to happen to me. Yeah. Well, it yeah. slowed me down and yeah. it's, it's really slowed me down and I felt like I was just fucking yeah. skyrocketing. And yeah. then, <laughs> and, um, yeah, you were for sure. And, but what was cool is the other day I was like, okay, I can't do clients. Let's work on content. So I've been just fucking pumping out content lately. Mm. And, and then I posted these bands for sale and basically from a finance perspective made more doing that two hours on the computer than I would have really doing a few clients. Mm. And I was like, fuck, if I didn't hurt my knee, I wouldn't have really had that recognition that, okay, if I put work into this, this whole like marketing side of things and, and taking photos and just constantly getting shit, um, it just grows because you put more out there and more comes back, mm. you know? And that's that Gary Vee shit, right? Just and I think you can, yeah, you can speak on it now too. Like if you have someone you got to rehab their knee, you can talk on like you've done it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. LCL, I'm glad. That's, and LCL is the best ligament to do. Yeah, the lateral. ACL would have been shit. Yeah, so it's the lateral, which is the outside. So every time mm. you take a step, there's a medial. It's like a, it's amazing. Like with, with the way the body moves, there's these figure eights. What do they call that? The Fibonacci symbol? Like the infinity symbol? Mm. And it's mm. like a figure eight, like a fish swimming, right? And every time you take a step, the foot sort of uh, protract, uh, protracts, fucking media, uh, collapses medial, yeah. and then it's sort of the gluten that contracts and it pulls it out lateral. And it's this yeah. whole wave, right? Yeah. And this this is with everything. When I'm running in your arms, it's like it's like this. There's these, all these little mm. figure eights. And why was I talking? To, oh, yeah. So when you take a step, it goes medial. So the LCL is lateral stability. So that's why it's been fine walking because there's never really times that your knee has to go out instead in unless it's like a sporting environment mm. or like a lateral lunge or something bad thing about jujitsu is there's a fuckload of that so <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah so that's why yeah. i'm like in my head man this is going to be stronger than it than it was you know i think of like mcgregor getting his legs snapped and the next day oh, he's like I remember next day he's <laughs> like it's all right what i needed was a titanium shin bone and now i got a fucking titanium <laughs> shin bone and yeah. he's like i'm good and i feel the same way it's like Fuck. i'm having so much collagen that mm. and doing everything sauna and like bringing the intention towards this that I, I think I'll be fucking better than ever when I get back. Yeah, I think you will be too. Like my leg when I broke it, like I'm definitely not what I was. Mm. But I mean, it was a shattered leg and a lot of nerve damage and a lot of cognition problems. Like a lot of like the connection to the muscles still not there, you know. I'm mm. tr- and I'm what's been helping me lately has been four foot striking and running. So yeah. I understand what you say with that. I've been really watching the way I run and watching how that exact thing happens, how you will land on kind of like the outside, it'll come in and go medial and yeah. your foot kind of snakes. Yeah. yeah. And, and four foot running is stiffening, right? Yes. It's that little yeah. s- stiffen. So it's, it's nature's mm-hmm. way of stiffening. Mm-hmm. But in my pre-rec before I can run, I probably could maybe as of today, I might give it a go later. <laughs> but um, I've just been hopping like, like a, like jumping. I love, I love how you said sprinting. Like yeah. I almost commented it. I'll be sprinting by yeah. next week. Well, I was the other, myself laughing. I, I, I think the other day I go, I'll be walking by, uh, by next week and then I, and then i changed it like a couple of days later to the star sign and said sprinting because i was like yeah I'm, yeah i'm a fucking it's hilarious yeah. man i just pictured you sprinting like yeah. two weeks after doing your knee i was like yeah. he will be doing that probably. yeah i fucking will be yeah um so okay i definitely want to touch on endo pco these are the things like mm. they're the main things i care about right and oh no nah, vegetable oil this is what we've got to get into <laughs> vegetable oil. my arch nemesis because okay let's, let's just say let's just say this in a in a real overview why don't you like vegetable oil and i don't like it either but you're going to explain it better yeah so where do i even begin so basically it's not only about the fact that it contains a lot more omega-6 than omega-3 so omega-6 is your inflammatory or um, omegas and then omega-3 is your anti-inflammatory so it's got heaps more omega-6 that's the same with like all seeds and nuts and Mm. stuff like that as well by the way yeah yeah it's all all nuts and seeds are a high omega-6 ratio nut milks and shit eh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. like, really, they're super inflammatory, which is what, like, Paul Saladino and Liver King and all that kind of, yeah. like, jump on that whole thing. Mm. Um, but then you kind of got to look at what they're actually making it from. So, like, the plants themselves often GMO and sprayed with 
glyphosate and all that sort of stuff. And then the processing that they go under to get to the actual oil is fully like, cause you know how hard it is to get oil out of like mm. rice. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> like, <laughs> lot, yeah. yeah. So they go under extremely high pressure, high temperatures. A lot of the times they'll use chemical solvents like hexane um, and then they deodorize them and then sometimes they add all other stuff in. So you just end up with this super inflammatory oil that is extremely sensitive to heat, light and air because mm-hmm. it oxidizes really quickly. Yeah. Um, so then you just end up with this rancid product that's in fucking everything. Yeah, and then yeah, your body literally makes everything. itself out of it. Hey, it makes it's because it's fat, isn't it? Yeah, mm. yeah. And then our, all our cells are surrounded by fat, mm. and then we are a vegetable oil fat walking around. <laughs> yeah, and it goes in, like um, crosses the blood brain barrier too. Eh? It's one of the major things that does that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm and, sure, yeah. And then it, the brain doesn't have a detoxification pathway like our gut, so it stays in there for a lot longer. I remember Cindy O'Meara saying seven years or something. Seven years to clear it from your body or something, okay, if you, if you yeah. stop today. Mm. Yeah. It um, was interesting as well. Um, you know Dave Asprey? Mm. He was talking about the – I think he was talking about fried food specifically, not like specifically veg oil, but mm. fried food is in veg oil anyway. But he was talking about the comparison of inflammation to the gut from veg oil compared to smoking a cigarette. Mm-hmm. And a cigarette, the inflammation within the gut lasts for about – four hours or something like that and veg oil or the fried foods it was like four dates yeah or something so yeah. everyone yeah. should just smoke cigarettes they're it, saying melanoma is like fucking yeah from um like there's a link between veggie oils and melanoma because it's yeah, oxidizing skin, the sun yeah it's oxidizing in the sun and your skin's just an organ yeah and oxidation so, becomes cancer right yeah mm. um with oh, what was i gonna say fuck my brain i've had, had too much vegetable oil for breakfast Daddy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, with, yeah, so with, oh yeah, for people like with pain, like fuck, it's, it's the biggest thing. Hey, like if, if they got pain, I, this is, I try and sell it to them because some people don't give a fuck about their skin. Like you get males, tradies coming in, but they're in pain, like years of pain. And I say, mate, if you eat, if you eat that fucking fried, this, whatever vegetable oil, yeah. that shit's going to hurt. It's going to inflame it. Hence why for this knee, I've been having a lot of DHA, which is omega-3, which is the opposite to bring that sort of anti-inflammatory balance. I've been getting a lot from um, brains, like beef brains, because mm. it's super high in DHA. Mm. Yeah. D- didn't really know that, hey. But you want the EPA. No. Oh, and it's got the EPA. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've been DHA doing is good for the brain. EPA is really good for like overall inflammation. Um, and mm. the fish oil. I've been on fish oil yeah. and Nordic naturals. But um, yeah, it's just like you get people having that with a bit of curcumin and, and their pain goes away. Because when I think about inflammation... I think about if there's say like a C six compression or something, right? If there's a bit of inflammation there, that's that's water and that puffs like puffs things up, so that compresses the nerve. People think everything's always about just moving something away from it, but if you can cut the inflammation away, that can decompress mm. the nerve. So if someone is listening right now and you've had chronic pain and you're still on this shit, <laughs> and like you probably if you're having an almond milk in the morning, you're probably having fucking vegetable oil with mm. it. If you're having like chips and and this random yeah. shit it's like eventually you'll, you'll get to a point that it's like non-negotiable and you know sometimes say if i'll you know what gets me is a fucking dip if i'm at like some event <laughs> yeah yeah and there's a there's a dip you are like, a bit of a dip i'm you a love fucking a dip. dip yeah you love a dip. <laughs> 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 with a chip because if you're dipping the chips yeah then, well, yeah. Made, then you're also having double veg oil there. I know, <laughs> yeah well i made almond flour um chips the other day which is pretty cool it's just almond, saying, almond flour is really high in omega-6 so yeah oh, <laughs> You can't win. What do I do? Like, I, I guess I made those crackers mm. that time out of your green juice scraps. That was good. Yeah, that was, that good, was good. And then we just dipped them in um, sunflower oil. It was nice. <laughs> 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 nah. This is the thing. It's in, literally, it's in everything. Yeah, like, yeah. everyone at home, mm. go through all your packet stuff. I mm. guarantee everything has at least sunflower oil in it. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think like, yeah, sun, getting in people off oils and then fungal and parasite infections yeah. so i reckon they're the two like misdiagnosed things that oh. need to be spoken we more have about. so many people this mm. is like it'll blow your mind people don't even know how many people nah. have fucking worms and shit yeah we have so many people sh- have fucking so how's this for a story right people listening and we uh, i'll put a little plug because we've got our cleanse coming out in a couple of months <laughs> like a new one i might do your cleanse it's good Please. we'll wait for our products new products to come yeah we'll, but, hook, um, you up. we'll hook you up yeah we'll hook you up but th- we had this person right in from south africa the other day right it was a guy and his and his girl and he goes, he just wrote this big thing. Don't even know him, never spoke to him, right? And he's like, My um my wife and my girlfriend, she's been really sick the last 
you know, a couple of years. We were always healthy in that, but she just got real sick and just started plummeting. She got a scan and found lesions all through her liver, mm. right? And they they found that like a year or two ago or something, right? And then they've been trying all this shit, seeing all these doctors, all these therapists. No one knows what it was. And she, they did the cleanse and apparently he, he told me, I don't know if thousands is the number right, but he said thousands of liver flukes come out of her and him. And then they Googled the top symptom and it was lesions on the liver. And that's common, right? The, yeah. People think they're just in sheep and shit, right? Yeah. But like I have, I've had fucking, I don't know, how many clients would have had that had worms come out? I've probably had like 40, I reckon. 40 mm. clients have had like, um, some just had plaque, like that plaque shit come yeah. out. And one of her friend's mum, I'm talking she had like this, man, I met, like it looked like a kilo, right? And she had hip pain for 20 years, okay? Like a bit of pain on the outside of the hip. And then she was in so much pain one night on the cleanse, blood came out of her first, right? Mm. And then the next, or well, right after it, the next day, all that shit came out. Like it's like it detached off the wall. And it just, and this is like, there's people that don't even, um, think it's all bullshit like that plaque they think it's the product itself but i'm like if that's the case why doesn't everyone have that come out it's like very rare that that comes out and why did it bleed yeah. and detach off the wall it's and her hip pain went away wow and her symptoms she goes i feel like 15 years younger Fuck, that's so good well i had a client with a cervical <laughs> injury and i go i just chuck them on the cleanse because for me it's like whether they have worms or not they just eat an organic food no veggie oil that's really what yeah. it is right yeah no nuts and seeds just meat and veg yeah while they have some um stuff and he had a tapeworm come out yeah so like, like, a, get like, long. like a solid yeah and then he did it again and had another one come out because mm-hmm. you got to do it twice like you got to do it for the then that full moon cycle right so you do it if it comes out they have eggs that don't hatch while yeah. you're while you're doing that and then when they eat their shit food for a week or back to their normal food then they go back on it they all start coming out again mm-hmm. and i've seen that happen like consistently yeah weak, weak organisms hey eh? that's that mm. what it comes down to is like you talk about veggie oil you talk about no sunlight everything mm. and you think about like people just being a weak organism like a weak plant and yeah. what happens to a weak plant is it gets eaten by a lot of different shit yeah so if it's a, if the soil's good and it's a strong plant it grows towards the sun it has good posture for one it grows mm. towards the sun mm. so if you're if you're a an unhealthy organism, of course parasites are going to eat you up. Yeah. And That's people, what I think about it now is that it's not something you catch. I think about it, it's something that if the environment can needs survive, to be in balance, eh? they, will, they, will, they will come, you know what I mean? If they, mm. if, if they can survive in you and eat, they will come. But if they don't have an environment to survive, like I've done the cleanse a few times, I've never had anything come out, you know? And mm. I don't think I had ever had a parasite infection. Right? And because I don't feel like it can survive in me, there's not enough sugar. They all eat sugar. Yeah. I eat fuck all sugar, you know, and I mm. do that much training that any sugar that it wants to eat, I'm, Using my body's it. eating you're, it. You're the king parasite. I'm the fucking, <laughs> I'm the king parasite. <laughs> They're all your little pets, dude. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what it is. I remember, because there's a balance, right? They're all in us. Like, there's all these worms and shit. And I remember my dad was talking to me about it. He's like, okay, well, if, they, if they're in there and they make you feel, <laughs> then who are you? Like, literally I'll, though we're yeah that's bad bacteria yeah. that's what we are i'm yeah. a symbiosis of fucking good bugs i hope you know <laughs> and then you see people that are just rotting mm. literally they look like they're rotting and mm. they're the opposite yeah you know? for sure yeah um oh did you is that back on bro oh hang on sweet yeah because i've been li- listening to have you do you know who mark sisson is no he's like wrote the primal blueprint he's pretty good like He's, he's, he's a little bit on fasting, but, you know, just good food, really. Hey, he makes his own Primal Kitchen products, and they're mm-hmm. just amazing. Um, like, no veggie oils or anything like that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's just uh, it's interesting him talking about, you know, how you be, you can be, like, say, a, a sugar burner or a, a fat burner. What's your take on, like, you know, being, being that, being, like, in a state of ketosis or being a sugar burner? Yeah, I think depending on how you've eaten, and it probably comes down a little bit to genetics as well, yeah. you'll be more adapt to burning one or the other. I know there's uh, one of my friend's cousins, I think, actually had an, a, a genetic abnormality that meant that his brain couldn't actually utilize glucose. So he yeah. was having chronic True. seizures for ages until they put him on um a ketogenic diet and he was running off ketones and then his seizures seizures went away wow so i think and then as well it's like how you like i said how you've been eating you just kind of you can switch over faster depending on how you've been yeah metabolic what does he call it metabolic flexibility oh yeah yeah so your body can actually learn to use um carbohydrates or it can learn to burn the fat and create ketones 
yeah, I just thought it was so cool because that's that's kind of what I'm feeling. Like I don't ever want to be one extreme or the other, but yeah. I'm definitely feeling that. Yeah, so yeah. say keto and you're having a lot of protein, right, and, and, and fat, I guess, um, like there's going to be a gluconeogenesis effect to that, hey, so they're still yeah. having sugar. And mm. is, is that – do you reckon that's – is it, is it, was he running off ketones or was he running off the gluconeate? Like, he's that? running off the glucose from the gluconeogenesis. Yeah. So if you're yeah. ke- if you're doing keto, you I think it's like a minimum seventy five percent of all your um, calories need to be from fat. But if you have too much protein, it's going to throw you out. Yeah. It's actually really hard to get into ketosis. Yeah, if you're having like lots of protein or you're just, just in, in life. general. Yeah, right. Yeah. Some people will be easier. Um, will get into it easier, but it's mm. actually really. Fucking hot. To yeah. go so to fasting it. is the quickest way, right? Yeah. And just eating heaps of fat. But even like a lot of people will test with ketone strips, but yeah. they're not actually that accurate yeah. as well. Yeah, because okay. a lot of people don't actually produce the metabolites in the urine. Yeah. Um, the best way is to get like a glucose monitor and actually get the yeah. ketone strips for mm. your blood. That'd be pretty cool, one of them, just to see your food intolerances and that. Hey, because doesn't it, your heart rate go up when you're having some food that fucks with you? Yeah, and it's good to – I honestly – and I want to do it to myself. I recommend everyone get, like, a glucose monitor and just yeah. see what foods spike your insulin, like, your glucose. Yeah, actually, that's yeah, what I'm saying. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Meant, yeah. I meant glucose. Yeah, yeah. Dave Sinclair right. was talking about that, man. You can just buy them. They're not that expensive, eh? No, I think you can just get yeah. them from the chemist. Yeah, yeah, and you can fully just put it on your arm and it just tells you yeah. what, what spikes it is. Like, yeah. for, for instance, like, he was having different types of potato. One potato would make him just go, like, woof. The other one would mm. wouldn't raise him raise it that much. So, yeah. oh, that's me, dude. That's yeah. I just yeah. found out the other day that I think Kathy calls them to tab- Tabasco. I don't know. It's the big dirty Tabasco. Uh, the, you what know the big dirty <laughs> potatoes. Yeah, the, yeah, the uh, grey the one, ones. The ones that like yeah, people would have survived on in famine. And you know? you, look, you look at them and you are just like oh. ones that you have to peel. Like yeah. you can't be. Right. You know, that are always dirty and they're like as big as my fist. You know right. those mm. ones. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so I yeah. had them the other day. I woke up like fucking bees had stung me. So it True. was, I was honestly, mm. I felt so inflamed. I was like, holy shit. It's like I had Thai, like Thai does that to me, right? So it was, I was so inflamed. Sure. And then I had these little Desiree white fluffy ones the other day and I was so sweet. cute. Yeah. Yeah. The cute ones. So, yeah. <laughs> so and, I, and I was fine. So it's not potato. It's this potato, that potato, yeah. sweet potato, fucking this, like whatever, you yeah, know what fucking, I mean? Man, bodies are fucking weird, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is the thing, like, see, so you're in tune with mm. your body so you can sense what went wrong i feel like and we were talking about before with people Mm. just being in tune and we're so disconnected Mm. people don't know that they feel like shit yeah and i see clients all the time i see them three four weeks later and they're like fuck i didn't realize i felt so bad yeah yeah. and they're just so you know you just get so used to feeling like crap that you don't know any difference so it's really hard to tune in with your body when you've been eating like shit for so long or you drink like four nights a week or mm, mm, whatever. Yeah, that's how I was until I juiced. I did juicing and I was like, whoa, I, I'm feeling healthier and better. Like same, I had anxiety, depression, all that mm. shit. And I was playing the victim of that. Like so yeah. easy to get caught in the victim of that, hey. Yeah. And I started juicing and I was like, whoa, I feel clearer in the head. I feel better. I feel happier. Like I can actually feel more. Yeah. I but guess. Yeah. Sorry, go on. It, you t- no, uh, no, no. Uh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> please, please take um, Reese, you know, one of the, the dude in our, um, yeah, he, he saw Nick Perry with back pain, right? And he had three years of, three years of pretty chronic pain, right? Mm. No, maybe it was longer. Maybe it was fucking, yeah, five years or something. Um, really bad seeing all the chiros, physios getting like cat cows and shit, you know? And, um, like he goes, I spent like, I can't remember, he might have like 20, over 20 grand seeing people, right? Wow. And he mm. goes, the moment that it hit me was Nick Perry sat me down. Our first two sessions with me talking about my sex life. That was the first thing, right? <laughs> and then and then he goes, um, he goes, just know this, your pain's not special. And he goes, that was like a moment for me. Mm. Like thinking, oh, no one knows this, but this is, uh, they all got this, but this is my one. You know what I mean? And, you know, we've had people, like this guy messaged me the other day. He's had, um, he hasn't been able to put his socks on without pain in 10 years. Wow. And he just said, I can do it now. And he's done fuck all. I've seen him once. And he just had to. This is the moment. This is what I mean by the flat back, right? This is probably the flattest back I've ever had. This guy's got chronic disc pain. He's had discectomies on L4 and L5, I believe, or maybe it was L5S1. And whenever you, like, just know that your discs are water, right? So whenever you do a discectomy, it takes away that, that water. So if you take away that cushion, then it all drops because mm. it's all stacked upon hydrostatic pressure. So it literally drops a little bit. And then you're going to get, if it drops, all those ligaments that connect those discs, uh, they have then got slack in them. 
because they're like they're closer together so mm. now they move right yeah. so you get more movement so he just got his disc done and then within a month his other there's now nerve pain running down the other leg because now it's hitting the other nerve so it hasn't worked right mm. and he doesn't they haven't told him that you can rehydrate discs you can do things but they wouldn't see it because they're dealing with people that are fucked and that won't, don't even know it and don't know you can do that shit. Mm. So he's changed. He's having bone broth every day. He's changed his water. I said drink as much fucking water as he can. And his hamstrings were so tight that it was just pushing the disc out. So all he's done is a hamstring stretch um, uh, and like a nice contracted one. Yeah, Neutral nice. spine. He's done pelvic tilts every morning, like mobilizing the area to bring blood yeah, flow. Beautiful. And laying on the long roller every night to that creates space. So whenever you lay on a long or on the ground, right, just flat on the back, gravity hits your spine and, and slowly decompresses it, which then gives space, right? And then a couple of press-ups, and he goes like, I'm, it, the pain's way worse. And I got him to do a bit of active stability there. Because whenever it's long, it means there's no contraction because the contraction shortens it. Yeah. So it's, it's pulled long. So you need to contract it to shorten it and give it the curve back. But he's, um, I'll, yeah, and, and I knew I'll get him out of pain. And they want to fuse his disc too. They want to mm. they want to book him in straight away. Last MRI got worse, and he's like, we need to book you in for a fusion I'm like man, let's just chill with me for a bit. We'll we'll get through this, and I know I will. And I got this girl at the moment with bad knee injury that she's like, she was just crying to me yesterday. At um, I saw her at the pocket and she was crying because she's just so down. Mm. But um, because she's seen three years ago, she goes, I was told by a physio and that that like you know I can't fix that. Mm. And I know I will, even though I haven't yet. I know I will. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, no doubt. And they need to know that too. Like yeah, in my assessment lately, I've just been started saying like, can you see yourself get better? And if they can't, I don't really want to work with them. Mm. Yeah. It's like, because if you can't see it, then I, I can't see it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, I can see it, but if you can't see it, it's not going to work. Yeah. That simple question, they go, oh, fuck. Like, yeah, actually, no. Even if they fake it at first, yeah. it switches it, eh? Yeah. 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 It's good. It's, it's good. A big thing. She actually messaged me yesterday. It was like, I've, I meditated at the beach this morning and I realized like, I'm not going to be my pain. I'm not going to be attached to my mm. pain. Like she's had so a mental good. shift. So good. And plus there's some information around the knees. Mm. Like I believe Bet this is why it's like, <laughs> you're probably the best physio ever. I believe <laughs> diet is fucking 80% of it. In my yeah, work, all back me pain, too. knee pain, all this shit. Yeah. Diet's 80% of it. And those last little niggles, you can come see someone like me about, right? Um, but if it's like a real chronic pain thing, diet it's all about diet to cut that pain down and yeah. then it's all about inflammation yeah yeah because oh. you got this like mid back thing right now your diet's on point and you just got this little niggle we'll have a look after it if you want mm. yeah okay. yeah yeah mm. and um and, and see what's going on there but it can just be yeah like once the diet's sorted then you really get a clear idea of what it is like if it's movement or it's mental emotional yeah yeah and yeah and it's just the concept of lowering your physiological load yeah so one of my mentors matt walden he um he, he did this big workshop talking about like all pain and he goes, if, if everything's on point, well, not on point, if say the movement side of things on point and that they're still in pain, it's about lowering your physiological load. So if anyone's got any pain, if I got knee pain right now and I have a shit sleep, fought with fucking a friend, whatever, that all adds to the system and yep. then that pain gets sensitized. So I may have a symptom here, but if I can lower my veggie oil, my water, my fuck, all that sort of shit, that pain will probably probably go away yeah you know what i mean and and it gets sensitized and it's just such a fucking people don't know that and i really sure video on that because that's absolute gold people think it's all separate this knee that shoulder mm. this back it's they think it's all different um mm. and, it, and it's not it's, it's like, like one everything. system mm. yeah. yeah everyone yeah. compartmentalizes all their problems when we need to look at everything holistically yeah for sure yeah and the basis of it usually is mental emotional it's like mm. it's in that area that chakra chakral area like the the safety, security, sex, procreation, that's where the most of the problems happen, mm. don't you reckon? Mm. Yeah, mm. definitely. It's all L5, lower. S1, L4, L3, L2. Knees. Yeah. Yeah. Personal um, power. What, what's on, what, how, how long has it been? Uh, it's been about one hour and three minutes, Whoa. young man. Fuck, oh, perfect timing. Perfect timing. Um, so real quick, what's what's next for you? So you're you're going to do some online programs. Your Instagram is better than bread. Follow it right now. Have a laugh. Have a have a educational geese. Um, and what are you going to post about today? When you do post, is it just like fuck <laughs> off the top, or do you plan a little bit, or what? Nah, I have to plan. Usually, yeah. I'll spend like a couple of hours on a Monday or something, and just oh, do a couple of reels, yeah. or a few reels, and then I've got some content for a week or two. Otherwise, like I just get stressed out if I start having to do it day by day. Mm, that's good. Mm. That's yeah. really good. Maybe we should do that. We we're pretty like loose with it. We're just like, oh, 
I, uh, I'll talk about this and then we just upload it. I'll talk about this. Mm. But yeah. we'll get better. I'm just worried I'm going to get banned one day from Instagram. You ha- have you been banned yet? Like, um, No, I've had some, you know, like when they give you a warning mm. and like mm. they delete some of your stuff. Mm. I've had that before. I feel like people are just reporting me. Mm. My personal Instagram page has had more of that during like COVID and stuff. Right, okay. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, they just go by algorithms a lot of the time, eh? Like if 10 people ban- report you, they generally just stop you sometimes. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, I'm not yeah. going to stop. Yeah, fucking <laughs> oath. You can't sense it. You're in your warrior archetype right now. Keep going. Keep yeah, going. for sure. That's, that's, that's the best. Yeah. All right. Well, that was a smooth talk. Thanks for um. Mm. Thanks for coming on. That was awesome. Thanks for having mm. me. Let's, let's no have a look at your back right now. And um, <laughs> yeah, better than bread. Give her a follow. <laughs>